one day I will die. And what I don't want to have to do is think on my deathbed how I did nothing with my life but go into an eight to five job on a daily basis. Hello, Mayday family. How are you guys doing today? My name is May. And if you're new to my channel, I am a licensed counselor with a YouTube channel. 40% of Americans are about to quit their job or uh, a good chunk of them have actually already quit their job. It's quite impressive because what we're finding due to the COVID and now that we're trying to come out of the COVID, especially here in America, is that a lot of people, particularly uh, people that are millennials, but just across the board have either quit their job or turned in their resignation or are about to quit their job. And so this is such an interesting phenomenon that is going around. And it is something that's so important to know. It's one of the biggest outcomes that has come thus far from COVID. Right? This era has now been coined the Great Resignation. And that is because almost half the American population is dipping out they're walking away from the current job that they hold and there's a lot of reasons behind that uh the uh, i know that in the news they are trying to cover it as though it's because the government had to shell out all of this money uh due to unemployment going skyrocket high whenever the COVID happened and so now people at home have been getting paid on employment have kind of gotten used to that and no longer want to return to work. That is, for the most part, what the media is trying to feed us and what they are trying to tell us the reasoning is, the government is trying to tell us the reasoning is behind that. But as this trend continues, and it not only is continuing, but it's continuing to grow, we're seeing more and more people resign, quit their jobs, and companies are having an increasingly hard time when it comes to recruiting top talent or any talent at all. At this point, companies are literally begging people to come work for them. And we're finding the side effects of people quitting, not just one at a time or one year and there, but in masses, right? So this is happening in the mass. And so it's really hitting these companies pretty hard. And that's what we're finding. And what we're finding is that there's no way that it's because the government decided to, sh to, to give unemployment to individuals. After all, individuals have to go back to work anyway and unemployment ends. And for most states, or if not a lot of states, and employment, unemployment benefits have already ended. They have come to an end. A lot of states have chosen to withdraw from that program already. And there's a lot of people that are either no longer getting unemployment or are getting significantly less, meaning they're not living on unemployment as comfortably as maybe they were able to before, as far as like being able to cover all of their expenses and businesses are having such a hard time recruiting and hiring people they're having to shell out more cash they're having to do things like increase pay for people and for the positions that they're trying to fill they're having to offer a lot of businesses are having to offer upfront bonuses right for individuals that choose to join their company a lot of businesses are also having to uh, offer money to individuals just so they can show up at the interview itself it's quite insane when we think about it i love it because it finally it, this is something that can benefit the people. The government is always so slow to do anything. And because of the society and the government that we have, nothing within the corporate world for the most part benefits the individual person or the worker. And now we're starting to see that shift because workers are deciding, I've had enough, I don't wanna go back, and that's that. Based on the research, one of the reasons why we're seeing this happen is that more individuals in the masses remember that COVID did just happen to a few individuals or areas without, within the United States. It was a worldwide pandemic, right? So in America, the whole America was shut down for a good portion of well over a year at least, 
right? So a lot of people during that time in masses have had the chance to now experience what it's like to not have to go into the office, to not have to play the politics within the office or be harassed by their manager on a daily basis or feel anxiety due to uh, the work that they're doing, for example, or even being stuck at their desk. So their jobs could literally be three to four hours long and now they have to spend all, the whole eight hours of their day, eight to five, nine to six, the core chunk of their life and day on a daily basis, at least five times a week, just sitting there. This is crazy. And so people are starting to really, for, for the most part, in essence, reevaluate what's most important to them. And they're not only starting to reevaluate what's most important to them, they're starting to prioritize it. Versus before, where people were so scared about not having a job, not being able to pay the bills. So they would literally go into an environment on a daily basis that they hated or they didn't like being in or wasn't the most beneficial for them or wasn't even paying them enough based on their skill set, you would see individuals in the masses still going to these jobs just off of the fear of not having a job or not having uh, enough money to pay for the bills. Now what we're seeing is that due to COVID, a lot of individuals have realized that, hey, this is not so scary. After all, I've been doing it this whole time. So in essence, because people were forced into this realization, not by any choice of their own, but they were forced to learn how to live on less than what they had. They're forced to learn how to readjust. And in essence, they were forced to really confront the differences that are there between when they go into the office, into a job they don't like on a daily basis, and when they don't have to do that on a daily basis, and they can have more freedom, be at home, take care of their mental health, take care of their physical health, and everything else in between, including kiddos, anything else that might, they might have going on, they have the flexibility to do. So this has really forced people, the masses, to start realizing that, hey, time is short and limited in this world. Everyone dies and I cannot and do not want to live my life in a way where I am not happy or I am feeling anxiety every time I have to go to work. Which brings us to point two. Here recently, a lot of companies have been asking people to come back into the office. And that has made and added to this huge ripple effect of people not wanting to go back into the office because most people within the corporate realm or within a, a five to eight to five job are not happy because there's a lot of politics in that environment. There's a lot of like kiss and butt. There's just a lot of things that really, really heighten the stress of human beings when you're stuck in an eight to five job. And so where people have now gotten used to working from home, the flexibility that comes from that and the better work-life balance that comes from that, people are not willing to go back to a situation that was clearly worse for them and worse for their mental health. We're finding that a lot of people are just realizing how drained and exhausted they were and yet they continue to go into work and put themselves in that position on a daily basis. Well, now that they've been forced to work from home and forced to see the difference in how it feels and how they are functioning as far as working from home versus going into the office, people are just not willing to go back. People are just not willing to compromise their mental health and well-being all over again just to satisfy the employer. Because companies laid off so many individuals during the pandemic, guess what? That work was then redirected towards whatever individuals were left, and those individuals were left with significantly more work and 
less pay. And so people are starting to realize their worth. They're starting to realize that it's not worth my sacrificing of my mental health and my sacrificing of my happiness because one day I will die. And what I don't want to have to do is think on my deathbed how I did nothing with my life but go into an eight to five job on a daily basis. And so people are starting to realize that their stress has actually increased because they are not feeling or seeing that companies are improving on appreciating their workers and what they do. And not only that, they are getting handed over all of the excess work that now remains because the companies have decided to lay off a good chunk of their people. And so the people that are left are finding themselves really exhausted, unwilling to compromise their mental health all over again, now that they have experienced the difference. And they're finding that, look, there are companies out there that are uh, changing their policies and willing to let me work from home. And, and so I'm going to find something that better fits my lifestyle and how I want to live. And people are actually executing on that. Lastly, we're finding that people are a lot more focused now on career growth. A lot of people are realizing that what they currently have is nothing but a job and can only be a job, right? And a lot of people are realizing that it's not what they want ultimately for the long term in their life. And so what they're looking for now is more of a career path, especially those individuals that spent a lot of money getting associate degrees or bachelor's degrees and are now stuck in, in, in a regular eight to five job with no room for growth or progression. And people are now starting to evaluate that against their mental health. They're now starting to realize and kind of weigh those two options and they're, they're coming to the conclusion that, well, I'm at a job that doesn't pay that much, has now added work onto my workload and has yet to increase my pay. And I'm suffering, right, on the mental health side. I'm more, I'm stressed out and anxious. Now you want me to come back to the office. And people are starting to see that essentially what that comes down to is it's not a good trade off for them, right? It's not worth their time. They're starting to weigh those th two things um, against each other and they're starting to actually see that hey actually what I've been doing is not in my best interest I'm gonna go this other direction where even if I'm making less money I have my peace of mind I have my flexibility I can use the days and my days the way that I want to use them as long as the job is getting done and people are now starting to realize that I don't have to put up with having my lunch being stolen from the uh, the company kitchen before lunchtime or before the end of lunchtime, right? I don't have to put up with random people coming to my desk and talking to me every day. I don't have to put up with playing the politics and, and kissing butt to escalate uh, in the ladder. So people are, are starting to realize that they actually don't have to do any of those things and they can work just as effectively if they're working from home and that only benefits them because then they have more flexibility to live the type of life that they would want to live. And not only that, there's a decrease in anxiety as well. And there's a decrease in depression that comes with that as well. People are starting to weigh those options and they're starting to prioritize themselves as well as their ultimate goals and dreams a lot more. In essence, people are starting to prioritize what's best for them. What are their dreams? What are their goals? How do they want to ultimately live? So this has really, really impacted this shift, this global shift that we're seeing among the working class. Another thing is inflation. Right now, inflation is the highest that it's been in 13 years. If we look at that, the way they calculate inflation is a little bit weird, but I know it sounds like a lot, but typically, it, you know, it's it looks like we're actually still on par with what we would be seeing anyway. We're not too far off, but nonetheless, we're seeing inflation hit really, really hard now. And so what does that mean? Things are starting to cost a lot more and employers have yet to raise 
the pay for any of their employees. So you have a lot more individuals that are saying like, hey, I'm not making what I'm worth. I'm not even making enough to cover all of the increases and all of and all of the increase in costs of the things that I need to survive. I'm out. And the biggest example of inflation is take the housing market, for example. The ho houses have skyrocketed in price. Although some of the things are starting to stabilize within the housing market, they're still super duper high. And it's not what it used to be. A $350,000 home now costs $400,000. And so there's a huge skyrocket in prices. People are starting to consider that as well. And you're starting to see people make a huge shift and not no longer accept something that they deem to not be up or up to par with the quality of life that they deserve and they have the skill set for. You're also seeing a lot of people who, because they've been working for, from home for so long, they have been able to take the time to actually figure out what it is that they love, what it is that they're passionate about and how they want to live. This is a good chunk of the people that are deciding to, to resign, essentially. It's because they've come to the realization that, oh, actually I'm passionate about this, or they've had more time to maybe start their own business. And now they're seeing, oh, I can actually do it. It is possible. It's nothing to be scared of. And they're handed in their resignation and choosing to no longer work for someone else. So you're seeing that happen a lot, a lot, a lot more. And so companies are really, really gonna have to get creative as to how they wanna get their workers back, workers back in, into the door. They're gonna really have to step it up when it comes to benefits, step it up when it comes to pay, step it up when it comes to work environment because a large chunk of people you know, are making that decision because the work environment within which they work is toxic and they refuse to go back to a toxic environment, not after seeing the difference between being in that environment and not being in that environment. The value that they're placing on themselves and their mental health has really increased. And so companies are going to have to do a lot more if they plan on getting more individuals through the door. In closing, I want to leave you guys with a quote that I absolutely, absolutely love. Salary is a drug that they give you in order to make you forget about your dreams. I absolutely love this quote. I do not intend on ever going back to an eight to five job. I don't even think it could, even if I had to at this point. So, you know, even me that has affected and that quote just rings so true, right? They give you a salary and that's, they give you basically little prompts to forget about your dreams and to kind of keep you caged and scared, uh, basically leading or running you through fear of actually pursuing your dreams uh, the, or whatever dreams that you may have. So keep that in mind. Definitely keep growing. Uh, look for something that you're passionate about. Look for a career, not a job. No one wants a job, right? Um, look for something that is going to make you happy and make it to where when you're laying on your deathbed, you have no regrets. Well, thank you guys for joining me today. Love, love, love talking to you as usual. If you enjoyed this video and find it at all useful or helpful or entertaining, definitely hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm. And don't forget to subscribe. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.